In this lecture, we study the basics of binary tree. This is a binary tree. The blue cells are called vertices. Data are stored in vertices. Vertex is also known as node. Vertex and node are synonyms. The lines with arrows are edges. An edge is a pointer to another vertex. Neighboring vertices are known as parent and children. In this figure, the two edges start from the vertex 15. Vertex 15 is a parent. The edges point to vertex 6 and vertex 22. Vertex 6 is called the left child. Vertex 22 is called the right child. In a binary tree, a vertex has at most two children. A vertex may have zero child, one child, or two children. The root and the leaves are illustrated in the figure. This is the root. The four vertices are leaves. The tree grows from the root to the leaves. The tree is actually upside down. It's just a convention. Starting from the root, we can travel along some edges to reach a leaf. A path is a sequence of edges. A path connects two vertices. Paths have directions. The direction is from ancestor to a descendant. The length of a path is the number of edges on the path. I mark two paths in the tree. Their lengths are both three. Another concept, depth of a vertex. We go from the root to the vertex by following this path. The number of edges on the path is the depth of the vertex. In this example, the depth of the vertex is 3. Starting from the root, we need to go 3 steps to reach the vertex. A tree has many vertices. Each vertex has a depth. The depth of the tree is the maximum depth of the vertices. The depth of the tree is also known as the height of the tree. This vertex has a depth of 4. Starting from the root, we need to move 4 steps to reach this vertex. Among all the vertices, this vertex has a maximum depth. The maximum depth of the vertices is 4, so the tree has a depth of 4. The last concept, subtrees. The root has two subtrees. This is the left subtree. This is the right subtree. You can understand subtrees in this way. You have two children. Your elder child and his descendants form the left subtree. Your younger child and his descendants form the right subtree. Let's study the data structure of binary tree. The figure is one vertex. A vertex must have a key. For example, if a vertex represents a person, then the key can be the social security number that uniquely identifies a person. There can be values in the vertex, for example, the name, phone number, and email of the person. In the bottom are two pointers, left and right. They point to the two children. Here is the C++ implementation of the vertex. Here the key is an integer, but it can also be a character or a string. A vertex can store some values, but a vertex does not have to contain values. Left and right are two pointers pointing to the two children. Given a vertex, we can use the pointers to find its children. This function creates a new vertex and initializes it. The input of the function is the key. This line of code creates a new vertex, v. 
Its key is the input of the function. Initialize the left and right pointers to null, which means the vertex has no child. Finally, return the created vertex, v. I'd like to explain the rotation operation to help you understand binary tree. Rotation means for each vertex, swap its left and right children. After the rotation, we obtain this tree. It is like looking at the original tree in the mirror. The rotation function is easy to implement. The input is the root of the tree. First, swap the left and right pointers of the root. Then, recursively rotate the subtrees. If the left child is non empty, then rotate the left subtree. If the right child is non empty, then rotate the right subtree. We have learned the basics of binary tree. In the next lecture, we will study binary search tree. Thank you for viewing this video. The link to my slides can be found below the video.